Thank you very much um, for the opportunity to talk about my project today. Um, so we all know that IL-17A is a major player in psoriasis pathogenesis, and I won't go into detail here. And we all know that the current opinion is that TH17 cells are the main source of IL-17A in psoriasis. However, recent studies have pointed toward the role of innate cells like neutrophils and mast cells that also stained positive for the cytokine. Um, in a resolved lesion, I won't go into detail into psoriasis recurrence, but as we have heard today, in a resolved lesion, tissue-resident memory T cells remain. And also upon ex vivo stimulation, so isolation and then stimulation, they are still able to produce IL-17, and they're still expressing the transcription factor um, RRC. Cells that also remain long-term in the skin, as we have already heard today, are Langerhans cells that are also still able to produce IL-23 upon ex vivo stimulation. So isolating the cells out of an already resolved lesion. But what about mast cells? So is there a role of mast cells in psoriasis? Um, traditionally, mast cells are known as the main effector cells in allergy. However, they're also involved in innate and acquired immunity. Indeed, they are long-lived tissue resident cells that are in close contact to T cells and cells of the epidermal dermal junction. Um, upon up activation, they produce, store, and release many pro-inflammatory mediators. And while it is known that the number of mast cells is increased in psoriasis, their role in disease pathogenesis remains unclear. So to shed some light upon this, uh, we took the advantage of a biopsy samples that we had from a previous study that uh, Professor van der Kerkhoff mentioned before. So this was our dithronol study where we investigated the therapeutic mechanisms of dithronol. And we had multiple different time points of biopsy sampling. However, here I will focus on day zero, so before any treatment, and also our follow-up time point, which was week six to eight um, after treatment, so biopsy samples from a resolved lesion. And what I did then was multiplex immunofluorescence staining for different markers. In the first panel, we included markers for T cells, CD3, myeloperoxidase for neutrophils, tryptase for mast cells, and also IL-17A. And in the second panel, we had markers for tissue-resident memory T cells, which were CD3, CD103, tryptase for mast cells, and of course, IL-17A. So what we saw in active psoriasis was that um, multiple different cell types are positive for IL-17A. And here you can see IL-17A in green, tryptase in red, MPO for neutrophils, and CD3 for T cells. So mast cells, neutrophils, and T cells are IL-17A positive in psoriasis before th therapy, and high numbers of IL-17 positive mast cells persist in clinically resolved lesions. So while we saw that the numbers of neutrophils being positive for IL-17A quickly vanished during treatment, really high number of IL-17A positive mast cells persisted. And we also saw that those are higher at baseline compared to non-lesional skin and healthy control skin. This is just an example or like a representative picture of IL-17A and tryptase for mast cells. So we also saw that IL-17A positive mast cells reside in dense T cell cluster. Here I stained IL-17 is shown in red, tryptase in green, the overlay, the double positive cells appear yellow, surrounded by CD3, for T cells in pink. And we also found that those mast cells can be found in close proximity to resident memory T cells. And this is an example of an active psoriasis where you see CD103 and CD3 for TRMs. The double positive cells appear white here, right next to a tryptase positive cell. Different examples. And we also saw this after treatment. So in a clinically resolved lesion, here in the middle, you see CD103, CD3 positive cells, so a TRM, surrounded by the green mast cells. What we also saw was that mast cells and TRMs are IL-17A positive in active psoriasis. Um, this you can see on the left-hand side here is a CD03 positive cell, also staining positive for IL-17. On the right-hand side, a mast cell, B03 
being double positive for tryptase and IL-17, but only mast cells remain IL-17A positive after treatment. In the middle, you can see a TRM surrounded by IL-17A positive mast cells. So to come to our conclusion, IL-17A positive mast cells persist in clinically resolved lesions and reside in close proximity to resident memory T cells. Um, of course, we have a lot of stuff still to do, for example, ruling out a dithronal specific effect. So we're going to stain biopsy samples from resolved lesions after systemic therapies. Uh, we also have to answer the question, do mast cells produce IL-17A or take it up and store it? Because there has been some discrepancy in the literature on that. Uh, and we'll perform a fish for IL-17A messenger RNA to see if they really produce it themselves. But most importantly, there's still some open questions that I have to address. For example, how do mast cells interact with TRMs or do they even interact? And most importantly, what triggers mast cells into action to release IL-17A? And does this cause psoriasis recurrence? So with this, I would like to thank Professor Wolf and the whole lab in Graz and our collaborators uh, at the State Hospital Klagenfurt and also at the Harvard Medical School where I spent the research day. And you, of course, thank you very much. Thank you very much for another excellent presentation. Any questions? You had some of them yourself on the last slide, I know. But any questions among the audience? Yeah, there's one coming up. Um, it's not really a question. It's just a, 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 I applaud you because you are asking the questions that you need to ask around, are they making it? Are they holding on to it? How do they release it? And I think that the answers to your questions are going to give us a lot more insight into how mast cells may be contributing to either um, sustaining it, the inflammation, or perhaps why inflammation happens in the same spot moving forward. So very well done, congratulations. Thank you. Maybe I can add to that. Um, I think that they are producing it because um, in my stainings, IL-17A really almost perfectly uh, aligns with the tryptase staining. And tryptase is an enzyme that mast cells are producing themselves and it's stored in the exocytic compartment, uh, which indicates production and release rather than endocytosis. So maybe this already gives us a hint that they are producing it. Um, but then, of course, doesn't answer the question um, what triggers them to release it. But thank you. My compliments, really, for the uh, very nice experiments. Beautiful morphology, also what you showed, and also the coexistence and the clustering. Um, I think what is extremely important is that you draw attention also to the IL-17 production, not only by the TH17 cells, but much broader by the neutrophils and the IL-17. And when you speculate on uh, the disease um, modification, the modification of the course of the disease, and look at anti-IL-17 treatments, are you also performing actually studies where you look at the intervention with IL-7, anti-IL-17s to study the long-term uh, modification of the course and combine that with this work? Um, so what we have currently planned is uh, taking biopsy samples from resolved lesions yeah. treated with anti-IL-17, but currently there's no study running where we have like multiple biopsy samplings throughout treatment, but of course it will be, uh, would be very, uh, very interesting. Um, as far as the neutral fields are concerned, the numbers, or at least in our study, the numbers went down so quickly um, that I think in the beginning, in active psoriasis, they are also main IL-17 producers, um, but they might not have that much of a role in psoriasis recurrence. So here I really think that mast cells and also the interaction between mast cells and T cells yeah. um, might play a very important role. But you are studying that phase indeed following the, uh, the, res the resolution of the lesions also and to look at that phase. That's yeah. very important. So, so Jim Kruger is going to be here. You should go talk to him because yeah. he'll have paraffin <laughs> samples that you could probably use and he's done all those time courses that you're interested yeah, in. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Thank you very much.